Hey guys, this is Christian and in this video I want to show you some new really exciting features in Teleport. You probably know this is one of the free and open source tools I've covered on this channel before that you can use to securely authenticate to infrastructure like Linux servers, Kubernetes or web applications. However, one of the biggest problems that people always asked me about was, hey, I'd love to use it behind a reverse proxy, something like Traffic or Nginx to manage TLS certificates. How do I have to configure Teleport to work properly? And previously my answer always was, well, just don't use a reverse proxy together with Teleport because it's going to be a lot easier to configure. But today I have some good news for you. Teleport from version 13 onwards finally works just great with any reverse proxies. And it also has a couple of other exciting features that developers have added, such as the AI assistant I haven't really talked about yet. So let's do this and go through some of the cool and new stuff in Teleport 13. Okay, so if you want to have a full list of all the changes in Teleport 13, you should definitely check out their blog post about this new version. I will link you that in the description down below so you can go and read all the details about these upcoming changes here. I'm not going through all of this entire list here because yeah some of these features aren't that much interesting for us homelab people they are more geared towards enterprise usage and professional companies if that's interesting for you again read this article but i will just go through some of the highlights for me personally apart from just some general quality of life improvements such as universal binaries including apple silicon for mac os or the desktop agent recording export and um, some Kubernetes performance improvements. They have done some other exciting things I just want to show you. For example, one of the new and cool things is the updated web UI. It just now looks a bit more modern, more clean, and they also have added a light mode to their web interface if for yeah, whatever reason you want to use a light mode in any of your programs. I don't want to use it, but hey, at least we now have that capability let me go and switch back to the dark mode and yeah so generally the ui has improved a lot over time i haven't really talked about some of the older versions of teleport that already introduced some interesting things like the management tab here you can go and switch from the resources to the management tab and now administrate all your teleport resources a bit easier yeah and directly in the web ui instead of having to type in terminal commands all the time so that's really much more comfortable in my opinion also some other things that constantly improve over time are the resource enrollment so you can see they have added a bunch of new capabilities to add resources to teleport to securely authenticate to all types of services in infrastructure, regular Linux machines, Windows RDP, which is a pretty nice feature, applications, Kubernetes, but also they constantly improve on cloud services like the public cloud providers, Google, AWS, and Azure. And they also improved a lot on their onboarding and enrollment wizards. So you can see if you wanna add a new application, you know, can just copy and paste this command and it will automatically add a new, application resource to your teleport cluster this is very very comfortable and i absolutely love this there's a new feature that is called desktops here and that allows you to manage windows remote desktop that already was introduced in teleport 12 i believe for now it still requires an active directory to be present yeah but i've talked to the teleport engineers about this yeah because um the remote desktop feature without an active directory is currently present but only in their enterprise license which i think doesn't really make a, a lot of sense yeah because for us homelab people we usually want to use the free and open source version of teleport we don't have that enterprise license so why not give us this remote desktop access without an active directory that would make a lot more sense maybe that's coming in an upcoming version of teleport it isn't added yet but i will probably make a new video about this as soon as this gets released so i'm very excited about this new feature and the other thing that is probably by far the most interesting feature uh, for us homelet people is the ability to use a load balancer something like traffic or nginx together with teleport you can see i now have a valid certificate but it's not managed by the teleport proxy it's managed by the traffic reverse proxy and issued and obtained through cloudflare and let's encrypt and that allows you to create a valid certificate for all the subdomains that Teleport will use in their applications feature. Whenever you know, I now want to use my Portana instance through Teleport, I first need to log into my cluster with two-factor authentication. And now I can launch a direct shell into my home lab infrastructure to manage all of my internal services. 
And that is really nice. I also added a bunch of other things like my Proxmox web interface um, to be secured with Teleport. The fact that it now also works seamlessly together with Traffic or Nginx, this is just great. Now to configure this, um, you need to do a couple of things. Let me quickly show this and connect to my remote server where Teleport and Traffic are running. And in the traffic configuration file, you can see I, I there configured the Cloudflare provider to obtain a trusted TLS certificate via um, DNS challenge. Don't worry, I will make a separate tutorial about this going through the deployment of all the different services. And then if you want to deploy a teleport, for example, in a Docker container, you don't need to expose any ports at all. Yeah, because um, that is why we're using traffic. You just need to change the load balancer service port to make sure that traffic is connecting to the port 3080 on the HTTPS protocol because Teleport's internal service is always using HTTPS. And then you basically just need to add the regular traffic labels. Yeah, I'm using a host regular expression here to forward all incoming requests to this internal domain and all the subdomains. So that is what Teleport would use if you want to securely authenticate to any application. They will use a subdomain in front of that URL of Teleport to forward and redirect these applications. So that's why we always need to pick up those both requests here, the teleport instance and the subdomains. What about this to the internal container? And also make sure we are issuing a wildcard certificate by adding the additional domains to the TLS certificate that traffic issues. So we are going to make sure that we're using this location here for the main teleport servers but also add a wildcard certificate using the DNS challenge to make sure this TLS certificate is valid for all the different subdomains. But that's basically everything you need to do. Yeah, it's really that simple as you would deploy any other service using traffic. And that is pretty cool. I absolutely love this feature. But apart from that very cool feature that is really interesting for us homeland people, there's another thing that I believe makes a hell lot of sense if you're using a larger environment and you are managing a ton of different servers, maybe in your professional infrastructure, but you yeah, need a little help with this. <laughs> Teleport already introduced a really cool feature that is called the Teleport Assist. This is a ChatGPT4 based integration of an AI powered assistant that helps you execute um, and run commands on all the remote servers that um, you have connected to Teleport. It debugs issues and yeah, navigates your infrastructure. I briefly want to show you how that's going to be used and what's coming next for Teleport Assist. So here on this page, I will link you that in the description as well. There you can see how you need to configure this. Yeah, first of all, you need to generate an open AI API key. So you probably will know this from um, yeah, ChatGPT. That's basically the OpenAI website, you need to create an account, you need to log in. And uh, this is where you usually can use ChatGPT to help you do things like coding, yeah, um, generate text, help you with explanations and things. I've covered this in some uh, previous videos. And here's also a section that is called API. So this is where you can create an API key and this is what you're going to need to add to the Teleport instance. So one hurdle that people might have when they want to use that, that Teleport Assist is currently based on a ChatGPT4 API key. And this is currently not available to everyone who is using ChatGPT. Yeah? If you don't have access to an open AI ChatGPT4 key, you can still try out Teleport Assist by signing up for the team plan. So if you are, Running a company, you have a bunch of different um, services and resources and you want to use the AI assistant, the teleport team plan might be the right fit for you. Anyway, once you have generated your key, yeah, you need to add this to the teleport configuration file. So you basically just open the main teleport config file and add this setting here in the auth service of teleport and to the proxy service of teleport at the assist open AI attributes and then add the API token path. And this is basically just a simple file that contains the content of your API key. Of course, you should not paste this directly into the configuration file of Teleport. It should be stored in a secured file where only the Teleport servers and root users or administrative users have access to. You will also need to give your user 
access to the assist role. So you need to go into a management settings roles and create a new role that is called assist. You can basically just copy all of this stuff from the documentation page. That is this part here. Just copy this, create a new role that is called assist and paste all of this stuff into that file. This will create your assist role, go into your user settings, and then you also need to edit the user and add the assist role to all the users that should have access to the teleport assist feature. And then if you log out and log in again with the user, you will see this button here at the top right corner. And this is where you can use the teleport uh, AI assistant feature. It's still in active development. And some of the features that it currently has is it can connect to your servers or also multiple servers and run commands across these nodes. Yeah? And it can also generate these commands. Uh, what's coming next is analyze the audit log. If you have a bunch of different users and you can use the AI command to help you get information about this auditing log, what the users have done on your servers, and it can interpret command outputs. So that is also nice for log analyzing and so on. But just to show you what's possible now, if, for example, if you ask the AI something like, what uh, Linux version does my server 2 has? You always need to make sure that you're using the exact name or some of the labels you have used in your resources. So if you have used a bunch of Linux servers and you gave them a label production, you can ask the AI what, which version do my production servers has, and it then matches to all of the servers with that specific label. You can also see it uh, first will present you a window explaining what it actually will do. So it don't just execute any commands in the background without your confirmation that probably would be sometimes a bit dangerous, but you can see it basically just runs in a uname uh, dash a command with my preferred user on the SRV demo two resource. So let's just run this command. And you can see this is the command output. It will also summarize uh, the command execution and will give you a short explanation. Uh, what was the result? We also can do other things like check if there are any packages that need to be updated. And then you can see it gives us a list of all the packages that can be updated. It executed this apt list upgradable command on both of my servers. And I can also see, okay, so these packages can be updated, but it can also interact with any other things that you can do on the shell. For example, show the status of the Docker services on node as a demo one. They simply would collect the status of Docker. You can also just query specific containers or show the last 20 log lines of a specific container running on my server. This is just the beginning. Yeah, If you have a bunch of different resources, you have many different servers and you use the AI assist command to troubleshoot things like getting log files. And once they implement some of the other features to analyze the output, I think this will be pretty cool for troubleshooting issues that occur on some of your remote servers. And you can use the AI command to help you administrating your resources. I think this is a pretty cool feature. It's not just a, a stupid chat GPT for Windows where you need to copy and paste stuff because it's implemented directly with your already enrolled resources in your infrastructure. I, this has direct access and can execute and run commands or collect outputs from all the different resources. This is a pretty powerful thing. Yeah, of course, you can also configure this feature a bit. Yeah, you can run it in a docked window, in a pop up window, expand the window. And if you want to use the remote uh, execution, you can also log into a preferred user that you don't always need to specify your username. Just go try it out, maybe with an open AI chat GPT4 key that you got or with a teleport team plan. I think this is really nice. All right, so these were all the cool, new, exciting features in Teleport 13. I think this is a huge step forward and there's a lot more interesting stuff planned for the upcoming versions, especially for us home lab people. And of course, I'm going to update you about all of the new stuff that comes out. If you want to watch a deep dive tutorial on how to deploy this entire system with a traffic reverse proxy, then check out my other video. I will link that in the description once it comes out. But yeah, that's it for today. As always, thanks everybody for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.